everyone. Thank you for tuning in. For those of us who are new, my name is Stacey Ann, and I'm so happy that you're here on this platform. Um, today, it's all about nursing as usual, and today I'll be talking a little bit more about orientation tips for the new graduate or the new persons who are transitioning from another country, or if you're just getting a new job. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and like, share, subscribe to the channel, turn that notification bell on, so that way you can be alerted of my newly released video. Yes, go ahead and turn it on. Thank you. So first, if you are orienting um, on a new job, the first thing you want to know is identify where that orientation is going to take place. Is it going to be in your department that you'll be working, emergency department, inpatient, depending on where it is going to be located, you need to have that information ready on the day of your orientation. First impression always lasts, so you want to ensure that you show up very early for your job. Research on topics that are going to be relevant to your department. For example, if you're working in the emergency room, research on topics such as common conditions and how they are being managed, you know, common medications, procedures that are done in that area. So that way you can be a little bit more familiar with some of the conditions that you will encounter caring for your patient. You would have already spent four years doing your nursing program, so some of these conditions will be very familiar to you. But it's just that you're now in the working world where the patients are directly in front of you. That's the only thing that is different. You want to look at time management during your orientation. That is going to be something that you're going to have to focus on. Because as a new person transitioning from another country or as a new graduate, you'll realize that there are certain things you're going to have to read through a little bit more careful. You're going to have to sit down and calculate certain things. Or it might be a case you're going to have to go on the internet and research on the topic because it might not be familiar to you at that time. You're already caring for your patients. So you can't be sitting down reading on a chapter regarding in heparin infusion when you have four patients that you need to care for. So time management is going to be very important and so you have to plan ahead as to how you're going to be caring for these patients and at the same time learning as you go along. Patient care ratio is going to be sometimes four to one, five to one, six, seven, eight, depending on where you're working inpatient versus um, the emergency department. So time management is going to be something that you have to get under control during your orientation period because when you finish your orientation period in three to six months time you want to ensure that you're going to be comfortable taking care of those patients and none of your patients is going to let be left behind none of your patients is going to die in your room because you're caring for a patient for two hours and not remembering that you have three other patients caring for so you want to ensure during this time you take the opportunity to say to your preceptor can I take two, um, two or three patients or even four patients during your orientation so you can build on your time management as you go along? Use your preceptor as your resource so that way in the event that you're struggling or you're having a hard time because you have a very critically ill patient that you're attending to, you can always say to your preceptor, can you go ahead and do the triage on this patient? Can you go ahead and medicate this patient? Can you go ahead and, you know, do an assessment on this patient? So that way, by the time you're finished with that critically ill patient, you will still be um, caught up with your patients. And if in the event that, say for example, after you're finished with your orientation, you realize that you're having a hard time, you can always still go ahead to your charge nurse and say, hey, I'm not comfortable caring for four patients at this time because I have two critically ill patients that I'm caring for. Is there any way for you to assist me with the other two patients or have your um, another person assist with you know caring for those patients until I'm finished? Because you don't want it to be a case where you're there struggling and nobody knows what's happening and they're expecting you to be producing, be, being... Um, being productive during that time period but you're having a hard time because you're still transitioning from your orientation phase so during this time now is the time you're not going to be shy you're going to go up to your preceptor you're going to go up to your charge nurses and you're going to be open about your comfort level talk to them and let them know so that way you know you won't feel burdened or stressed out or under pressure during the time when they are expecting you to be functioning appropriately you want to ensure during your orientation, you get all the skills done, get all your skills, you know, up to date, whatever skills you're not confident with or competent at, now is the time to go ahead and seek out in the department where they have a catheterization needed, a nasogastric tube insertion, IV, blood draw, all of those procedures that are commonly done on your floor or in the emergency room. Now is the time to go ahead and seek out those procedures so you can have it to 
build on during your orientation phase. Because as I said, remember, when you're finished with orientation, nobody's going to remember that you were just coming off for orientation. You could finish orientation today. Tomorrow, you'll be functioning independently as a nurse caring for your patients. Sometimes they will be nice enough to be like, okay, then you're just finishing orientation. They will kind of take it slow with you. But at the same time, if it is a department that is crazily busy, then sometimes mm -mm, nobody's going to remember that you're just coming off orientation. You have an RN license working with, that's all that is important to them, getting the job done as an RN. All right, so during this time, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask your question. Research on topics that are not common um, to you. Read on them so that way you can have a little bit more of a knowledge on them and um, be productive as well as competent at the end of your orientation period. Now is the time during orientation when you're going to be thinking with your brain. You're going to be thinking with your brain. Try and avoid the Dr. Google and the Wikipedia. There are evidence-based um, platforms out there or websites or apps that you can actually go ahead and download and have them for reference so that way if something pops up you can always go back to those evidence-based websites or platforms and get the information that you need to care for your patient because sometimes the information is on google but the information is not uh, evidence-based you know and so you want to ensure that you have reputable websites that you will get your information from so that way you can build on your knowledge and be competent at caring for your patient later on if for example your orientation is finished and you're not comfortable feel free to go ahead and say to your manager that look i have completed four months of orientation but i'm still not comfortable with this section can i get an extension or can i get a preceptor or somebody that i can use as a resource when i'm doing my patient care you know over the next few months so that way I can constantly have somebody available to answer my questions or show me a procedure or a task or assist in any aspect of care for your patient to prevent any detrimental effect for your patient. And then the final thing I would love to say regarding orientation period is I know sometimes you might feel under stress or you know you're feeling under the pressure but the most important thing is document 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 they always say work not documented is work not done and if you're not documenting as you go along then that can be something that is gonna be you know a problem later on because you don't want it to be a case where you did something and it's not documented because you fail to document because you think you have so many things doing that you fail to document it and that is the one information that is going to save you years from now if they need to go back and audit a chart or if there's a complaint against you you're going to have that information documented so you want to ensure that you take the time out and document as you go along because as i said work not documented is work not done and you don't want it to be a case where you spend two hours with the patient and then only to find out that they're saying oh you didn't document anything so with regardless of you saying that you put in an IV or two, it's not there. They're saying, well, they didn't put in any because it wasn't there. You know, sometimes these can come back and haunt you and you don't want to be that patient who is trying to, you know, try and not pay a hospital bill that is going to be coming to say, well, I didn't get an IV. And when they look in their chart, they didn't see anything documented regarding an IV. They're just going to have to go with what the patient says, even though definitely you put in an IV for that patient in order to get the blood work. And these are some tips that I will just leave with you for your orientation period. So that way you can be adequately prepared and uh, be somewhat, you know, informed as what the expectations are during your orientation. Thank you for tuning in and please remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more.